subscribe to m code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content hello and welcome back so in the previous lectures we have seen all about the etl processes and how they work under the hood and orchestrate a data pipeline so basically in this lecture let's get some hands dirty and i hope you already have a id python id which is already set up let's build a simple etl pipeline to get you to get you good understanding and grip of the concept so let's so as you already know that etl which means that extract transform and load extract means we are going to extract the data from a source source could be anything it could be a text file it could be like a raw data files as well as it could be a, it could be a cloud storage or a relational database or else it could also be the iot device from where the data is coming but in this example we are going to see how to grab a data from an api so from the api we will pull the data and convert it into the required format which will be the next step which is transformation we will add multiple columns to it to able to enhance and enrich the data so that it could be used in the further process and then load it back so here we are going to just load it directly as a csv file into our system we are not going to go into any intricacies any in any databases and all we have seen all of that in the previous lecture this is all about getting you a good grip and understand and build your basic understanding of the etl so without further any do let's jump on to the coding part and i'll be walking you through the code which we are going to see in this lecture okay okay so there are like prerequisites that you need to have in your system to able to execute this script you should be having a spider id so i hope if you have anaconda distribution installed in our system so it comes out of the box with the spider id it's a pretty basic id not that much people are using it it's not that professional like pycharm but let's be honest for just getting started it's right out of the box and no setup is required so if you have anaconda distribution spider id will be a good choice for starting for just getting started so as you can see it's our file so basically this file resides in a folder named tutorial in our c drive so here itself we are going to generate our target file which is nothing but the transform file which we are going to load into our system so let me just walk you through the code so here as you can see we have imported the required model here we are not going to deal with the big data but let's be let's keep it simple let's use pandas only pandas is also a great tool to manipulate the data using python so it's a python library and it's not a built in library you have to install it so if you don't have it on your system just pip install pandas into your terminal so that it will get distributed across your python installation so basically you have to import the requests which is which we are going to use in this code to able to fetch the data from from a remote api so basically here we are going to import pandas as well as the request so once you once you do that we have few functions which has their own functionality let's walk you through one by one so basically the first one is the extract data so this function is nothing but storing all the responses which we get from a certain api so this function will take the api url and then request then the get method will actually pull the data from the api when we call it an action and then this data is then converted as a json file so json means the key value pair and then that data and that key value pairs which is nothing but a dictionary like structure will be stored in the data and we are just returning the data the next one would be we have to transform that data because the data coming from an api will not be in the required shape to consumed by the data analyst as well as the data scientist so the next stage is nothing but the transform data and the input it takes is the data which is nothing but present in the json format so once you got the json format you can directly create a data frame on top of it i'm not talking about pyspark data frame but the pandas data frame and to able to do that we have the data frame method in the pandas to able to create a data pandas data frame on top of it it's a pretty simple to spark we are the only difference between pandas and spark is the distributed computing we are not leveraging the distributed systems 
and we are not distributing our job on the cluster since it's a small data file and we don't have an active production environment and the multiple servers not set up here so for now pandas will do just fine so basically once you create a data frame all you have to do is we will first apply a filter and just get and it's a pretty simple filter which filters the record where the user id is less than or equal to 5 this is a pretty simple filter and you will be able to crack it so next one will be you will going to add a computed column which is nothing but give you the title length which is nothing but the length of the title length column and then after that we are going to clean and format the title using by using capitalizing the each word and after that once you do that we are going to also generate a summary column from the body column which already coming from the api so these are nothing but the transformation phase to get our data cleaned up and ready for the consumption side so the consumption side is nothing but loading the data so for loading the data you are going to create a file out of a data frame using the 2 csv function so this 2 csv function present in the pandas nothing but gives you the capability to create some file and here the argument is index equal to false because pandas generate their own index for each data frame so we are going to ignore that and in the etl process here we are going to call every function in this function so this etl process function we are going to define the api url so basically you can use your own url as well to consume the data from the particular api and then you got a file name so file name is nothing but enhanced etl output.csv so this file will be created on our system so as you can see right now nothing is there just the code but when we execute this it will directly create a csv file in our file location or any location you desire you can also write your data into a database by integrating it using a connector or else you can also communicate with the cloud services so you have just have to make sure that you have the right access as well as the firewalls are open between your local system and the cloud storage solution so basically here we are storing the data from the extracted data and we are calling all the functions one by one the extract data transform and load the data and passing all the necessary arguments and the end at, at the end we are going to call our etl process so without wasting any time let's trigger this job and let's see what are the results so i'll just trigger this job and yeah the data has been successfully extracted transformed and loaded into the file which is enhance etl underscore enhance etl output.csv so i hope the file and there you go the file is already present in our local system so if i open this file we will be having the finished output which can be consumed by so you can maybe you can maybe connect your power bi dashboard to the excel because all these products are microsoft and tightly bind together very well so as you can see we got a user id we got the id we got the title as well as the body title length and the summary which we generated using our title so this was a pretty simple use case but you know the road map now how you have to extract the data how you want to process it how you want to load it into the local disk or else any of the cloud platform or the external data storage solution so i hope you understood how the etl process works step by step with very very simple and basic example you can play around with the script and also integrate many services so that you will get to know the capability of the etl process so that's it for today i'll see you in the next one so that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture